In today's video, I want to break down how I edit audio in my sports edits. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Pete, again, content producer for Major League Baseball here. And today, as I mentioned, I want to go over how I edit audio in my sports edits. One of the most neglected things I see in other people's edits are the audio setups and, and post-production audio and things like that. Adding in audio and, and really curating your sounds in your videos to match the edit will take your edit to the next level. It will make your video five, 10, whatever times better. And it's something that should not be skimped out on at all. If you do not have a Rode mic or a Sennheiser mic or a mic of your choice, please go out and get one if you do have the financial capabilities because that is where you should start when it comes to audio. Having that natural crowd reaction to work with is crucial to incorporating into a good edit, as well as getting sounds off the internet that can supplement your video and further enhance it. The other day, I posted an edit to my Instagram as a reel, just with some Braves footage, showcasing that the season is right around the corner and baseball will be back in Atlanta. And I believe that this is a good metric, this is a good piece of content to show y'all how important audio is. So I'm gonna play this edit through without the music, just so you can see the layered sounds under Underneath. And then I'm going to break it down and show y'all where I got the sounds, how I got the sounds, and mixing it in post. Now we are in Premiere Pro, and this is where the magic happens. On my timeline here, as you can see, all I have is the song cut up, a couple cuss words cut out, and then the natural audio of a couple of the clips. Obviously, when I export this edit, I will mute the song and then put the song from Instagram Reels over it. But from here, we are going to add a couple things that will supplement our video and enhance it a little bit. It, it's gonna create a little bit better atmosphere. The sounds are gonna match the clips. Impacts, the bat swinging, some whooshes when the camera pans really fast. Simple and subtle things will enhance your edit a lot. So I'm gonna show y'all where to find those and how to implement those into your edit. Over time, I have a very extensive library of sounds that I just ripped off the internet, royalty free, things like that. So over time, you can build your sound library, make sure they're always royalty free, or pay for something like Soundstripe or something like that where you can get free effects. If we start at the beginning of the edit, the first part is a bunch of slow motion, players coming out of the dugout, it's slowly building. When I have a little sequence like that, I want to create atmosphere. I want to create something that builds the climax even more so. And that would be kind of like a deep bass, rumble, or maybe like a muted crowd noise with some low pass over it. So that's what we're gonna do first. So as you can see, you have this home run clip here from Matt Olson. This is the raw sound. If I hit F, it is going to bring it up in our effects controls panel. And I'm gonna be able to see that audio and I'm gonna clip it right here in this part where it's very loud. And then I'm gonna drag it right here at the beginning of our edit. So you might be asking why would I do this? I'm gonna drag it right here, turn it down to like, turn it down 15, and then go in to effects panel, type in low pass, filter in EQ, and what low pass will do is basically kind of mute the sound. It'll be kind of, it'll sound like it's coming from a room over. That's gonna give us an initial underlay of crowd noise. There's a crowd there, it's gonna sound more like some ambiance, and I'm just gonna simply fade this out here as the climax builds. So back it up to our first raw clip of audio there. No one's gonna notice that that is from where the crowd was super hyped because of that low pass. Anything you do, it's important to note that anything you do soundscape wise, mixing things, it, make sure it's very subtle. Listen to it with headphones in, listen to it without headphones in. It shouldn't be super, super noticeable unless you want it to be. It should be something that's very subtle. Someone notices it, but it's not at the forefront of the edit. To add to this, I am going to go into my elements folder. I have a sound effects folder here where I have all types of things. I have crackling fire. I have clicks, various things, cinematic whooshes, things like that. 
I also have a sound design folder that I purchased a long, long time ago, five, six years ago, and that has all different types of things, fireballs, things like that. But for this, we're gonna use this cinematic low rumbling bass, drop it into our project. And this is what we see here. And we're going to drop that into our first sequence here, cut it, and what I'm gonna do is make sure this gets louder to build to the climax. So I'm gonna drop this down the levels to negative 12. Actually, we're gonna go negative 15 and then take the panner balance, make it all the way negative 100, which means it's only gonna come in at the left and then drag it right to where the bat impact is in our buildup, reset this to zero. So that's gonna build, it's gonna slowly get louder. It's basically a fade in but a little bit more uh, pronounced. Don't do what I did and forget to keyframe this panner back. Make sure at the end here where it cuts off, make sure your panner balance is set back to zero. That'll make sure it's coming in both ears or both sides of the speaker easily. And it'll slowly go from your left to your right and it'll slowly get louder. If you notice here, as we continue to build to this kind of Matt Olson home run at the climax, there are some additive dissolves here over a couple of these frames as it gets faster and faster. I want kind of a camera click with another riser or like a reverse effect into that first bat impact and when the bass hits in the song. To do this, I'm gonna go back into my sound effects folder and find a camera sound effect right here and then this reverse cymbal effect which I use all the time. Both of these sound effects were found online on YouTube, royalty free. And to do that process, it's very brief. Just go into your web browser of choice, go to YouTube, do camera click sound effect, and find one that says no copyright. There's one right here with like five or six in one video. All you'll have to do is go up to your link, copy it, and then search YouTube to MP3. You might have to look for one that works. Copy it in here, get link MP3, get link, convert, download. Don't click on the ads, you'll get a virus. And there you go. Then you have the sound effect in your downloads folder. That's how I've gotten all mine. Make sure you credit the artist if they ask for it. For these two sound effects, I'm going to put this reverse cymbal sound effect, which is one of my most popular, most used sound effects, right at the bat impact. Drop the gain to like 10. See how it sounds with the song. That sounds pretty good. It's low enough, but you can still hear it is what I mean by that. For your camera sound effect, this particular file has multiple different camera clicks and camera shutters. We're gonna find one that works for us. I like that first one, see how it works. And then I like that too for the second one. Boom, drop it in there. Line it up with our transition. Fade these two audios together. Always fade your audios together. And that looks really good as we build to that impact. I think that's all we need to do. Make sure you don't overdo it. Like I said, the consumer should notice it, but it should not be at the forefront. It should be very subtle. Next up, we have our atmosphere. We have our crowd noises, things like that. This part is a little easier. So not to overpower the song, I'm going to drop the actual roar of the crowd a little bit here to minus six. And then I'm going to turn the impact of the bat up five. And that is the natural bat sound. That is because I'm on the directional mic by Sennheiser. It's very good at picking up impacts, things like that. Fade these together. Like I said, always fade them together. I'm gonna leave this here, drag it through the next clip. And this is the nat sound for this Grissom sliding home clip. We're gonna blend these together. You can hear the roar of the crowd when Grissom kind of opens his mouth like that. I love it. Drop this down three. And for the slide here, when Grissom slides into home, I have a baseball slide into bass sound effect. Drag it into our project, like so. And line it up with the slide. This is also very loud. Turn that down six. And that sounds pretty good. We want that one to be pretty pronounced. Something like that where we're enhancing an effect, like an impact or a catch or a slide. I think it sounds better when it's a little more noticeable. But that's just me. We're going to drag out this Von Grissom audio to the next Strider clip, just keep it through. And then the next clip is a Kyle Wright strikeout. We're gonna add in the natural sound, fade these two together. 
drag this out, cut this where the sound gets really loud or where the crowd gets really loud, F drop it down, fade these back together, and add in a catch sound effect, which I already have in my project from yesterday. That catch sound effect, I'm going to find the frame where the ball hits the mitt. It's right about here. Zoom into your timeline, add it in. Another thing we want here, since the camera is whooshing really fast, anytime where the camera zooms in, zooms out, you're scaling fast, any type of quick motion blur, add a whoosh. This sound here comes from my folder that I bought a long time ago. I bought the rights to a sound effects pack. I can't even remember where it's from. I just keep dropping it from hard drive to hard drive that I have. And it comes with like four or five of these little simple swooshes. You can find these online as well. This is the one I'm going to use for this. As the camera starts moving, I'm going to line this swoosh effect up. So that's where we're gonna start it. Zoom in. Drop this down six. And that part of the video sounds pretty good. I'm going to, again, do what I did on the last couple clips is drag this natural audio out. Now, this is an Ozzy Albies nested sequence that was a slow motion clip and I speed ramped it. So since this is a slow motion clip, I do not have audio from the shot. So what I'm going to do is find another home run and manufacture that audio. This is another Matt Olson home run clip I have from the outfield, just to vary it up. Take that. This is the crowd roaring here, and I'm going to find the first Matt Olson home run we shot, or at the climax of this video, take the bad impact, cut it right there, so it's just the impact, and line it up with Ozzy right here. That sounds pretty good. And we're gonna fade this audio here from the last clip, drop these together, right click, add default transition, that's gonna fade them together. Then we want to turn up our gain on the impact to 10. So it's really pronounced. I have a baseball swing whoosh. I'm gonna drop in. This sound effect is not the best, but I'm going to use it still. I'm gonna make it very subtle, very, very low, low volume. So Ozzy's swing is obviously like a quick speed ramp. So, and I wanna match that up. I'm going to drop this 12, line up the peak with where the speed ramp starts when it starts to get slow. There we go, that's perfect first try. The peak here of the whoosh is lined up with the bad impact, and that sounds pretty good if you ask me. Perfect, and that's it. That's how you create a soundscape in a, in a video, a hype video. Do not neglect your audio, it can make a huge difference. Just adding that little bit of atmosphere, emphasizing those impacts, those whooshes, playing around with that stuff really makes a big difference. So I highly suggest if you've never done it, please try it. You can get sound effects online, make sure it's royalty free, or buy some sound effects, I use Soundstrike for music and sound effects, and then I also use free stuff that I've just accumulated over time. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions below about audio and this video in particular, let me know in the comments section below. And thanks y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.